The National Tuberculosis Leprosy and Brule Ulcer Control has demanded to, to make Nigeria free of tuberculosis, to save lives, to kick out tuberculosis in the country. And all what we have been doing is basically on two strategies, improve on prevention, improve on the diagnostic, and improve on our treatment, making sure that people are retaining care for absolute cure, which is the sure way of cutting the chain of infection. Because this is a transmissible you know, and communicable infection. If you get any case that is, you know, any case of tuberculosis, the best thing to do is to make sure you give the person adequate treatment and that person is cured. In that case, in that manner, you won't be able to transmit it to the next person. So the more that people understand uh, about the disease, about the treatment, and about the experiences of people who have TB, the more that the average person understands those things, the less stigma, the less discrimination there will be. Well, why is that? Because one, TB is curable. So uh, if we understand that TB is not a death sentence, there's less stigma. Number two, when people take TB treatment, almost immediately, very quickly, in a matter of days or weeks, they're no longer contagious. A big part of the fear of, and, and stigma and discrimination is around a legitimate fear for, for contagion, a fear of getting sick yourself. But if you know that people affected by TB can be cured, and even when they're still taking their treatment, they're not contagious, that will reduce the fear and reduce stigma. But one of the other things is that we need to use the law. As a lawyer, I, I understand the, the power of law. So we have to have a law that protects people affected by TB, a law that, that expressly, explicitly prohibits discrimination. So if you lose your job because you are on TB treatment, if your boss finds out you have TB and you get terminated, that should be against the law. You should not be allowed to terminate someone simply for being sick. So again, I would stress that it's a matter of having awareness accurate information, but also support from the law. We need the law to protect the rights of people affected by TB, and in particular to prohibit discrimination. Health rights are meaningful only to the extent of its enforceability, and its enforceability in our climate also depends on the extent to which such human rights treaty is embodied in justiciable legislation, just like I've said in our constitution. For Nigeria, this is where the problem lies. Obviously, Nigeria has, has domestic laws against gender-based violence, which invariably leads to protection of reproductive health rights. However, there is no law that directly provides for the rights to health. The nearest in this regard is the non-justiciable section 17 sub 3 of, sub C of the Constitution, which requires government to direct its policy towards ensuring adequate medical and health facilities for all persons. So you could have a convention or a protocol to which Nigeria is a party, which has not actually been put as part of the constitution, but of course the National Industrial Court, by virtue of the third alteration to the constitution and section 2541C, has the powers to apply those protocols, conventions, and best practices. So I think this is a veritable platform for the enforcement of the rights that we're talking about in this respect. To sensitize our judicial officers for the need to enforce such rights when such matters come before them on uh, discrimination against uh, citizens on grounds of health, you know. And this will, like I said, a judge will not fabricate a case, but the lawyers also need to be more proactive. Lawyers should, should be more sensitized to take up such matters and bring such matters before the court for enforcement. The Constitution as it is, even though has not specifically recognized uh, um, uh, rights, to funda uh, rights to health as a fundamental right, but uh, I believe uh, the judiciary can proactively expand the Constitution and interpret the Constitution in such a way to include rights to 
from this, uh, for, to freedom from discrimination on grounds of health as part of our fundamental rights in this country. Our parliamentarians, the National Assembly, including the executive, need to channel more resources into, H into TB work. We need to resource TB work. It's about allocations, it's about implementations, it's about release of funding and all of that. We have, for example, the, 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 the Human Rights Action Plan that has been put together by stakeholders. This action plan needs budgeting, it needs resources for implementation. This is very key if we're going to talk about gender and human rights based approaches. So, from Lawyers Alert, it's a call to action for us calling on society organizations, the media, to you know continue intensive advocacy on the parliamentarians and the executive to release resources for you know fighting TB we need to eliminate TB in this country this is really a call to action for every single stakeholder this is a call to action for every single member of public uh, on all well meaning Nigerians that we all need to join hands together towards ending TB in Nigeria. We need every single person on board. I'm talking specifically, for example, to the lawyers, to the media, to, to all well-meaning Nigerians to join us in this fight towards unmasking tuberculosis stigma and ending tuberculosis in our great country, Nigeria.